Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today we have a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, we are going to talk about many things, including videos that you can look forward to on the channels, and there are quite a few of them. I don't know how I'm going to get through them all. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about a very interesting figure that I just stumbled across on YouTube named William Henry Jackson. Stay tuned for that if you're into history or just colorful characters. For sure, stay tuned for that. And then a segment that I'm just going to have to call What the Heck, Sweetwater. We'll get into that soon, too. It's a major music retailer and some, some weird stuff's going on with a purchase I was trying to make recently. And then, of course, we have your questions and feedback in hashtag AskStuffAndThings. So let's get into it. All right, so you may notice I'm sitting here in my apartment next to the gerbil cage. The reason I'm sitting next to the gerbil cage is because I was trying to do a video that has been, re been requested by quite a few of you in which I showed you an update on the gerbils. And the whole point was I have this playpen thing. It's off camera right now. And I was going to try to get them up, get them in the playpen and play around with them in the playpen. I mean, they're not super interactive, but at least get them to run around and do things. The problem with that is that they're usually fast asleep at this time of day. And I kind of have to film this kind this time of day because there is light right now. But if I wait until the evening when they're usually active, it'll be too dark. And uh, so the little crepuscular weirdos are kind of refusing to get out of their burrow at the moment. And I'm hoping that maybe if I'm sitting right here and talking, that my annoying voice will wake them up and then they'll decide to peek their heads out and then I'll be able to finish the other video. So that may be the video that you can look forward to this Wednesday. I also just got a really cool guitar pedal from Diamond for my birthday. Um, it's the MXR Custom Shop 1974 Script Phase 90 Hand Wired. I don't know if that's the actual official title, but I think that's all the different little components of that title. It's just a really cool phaser, um, a as pretty much exact as they could make reissue of the original 1974 Phase 90 that came a, came out in 1974. So I want to do a video on that coming up soon. Um, I also wanted to talk about, or not talk about, but do a video about making an old fashioned. We talked about doing that in the past. We have death loop videos on stuff and things plays. There's another video game that I'm kind of thinking of maybe doing a short little series on, or maybe just one or two episodes called Sifu. And of course we have other blends that we need to get to. So there are going to be many things and I'm going to try to get to all of them and within some sort of a timely matter, get them posted on Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. Lots to look forward to. And yeah, it was my birthday recently and my fiance got me some very cool things. Just an amazing birthday week in general. She made this crazy Japanese feast um, last night where she just had multiple dishes. She made sushi by herself, um, okuyomiyaki, all sorts of really cool things. And then... We had uh, my favorite burgers that she makes on Tuesday evening. She got me this really cool thing from Etsy that's like a little music box with uh, Totoro on it. It's very Japanese centric, um, just a lot of cool stuff. And then that pedal. So I want to talk about that at some point too. Good things to look forward to. So while trolling on YouTube recently, as I am want to do, I came across a video and I'm going to link this video in the description box below. So look for this. And it was basically, I can't remember the exact title, but it was saying it was an interview done in, I believe, 1942 with a man who had been born in 18, for, or no, yeah, 1843. And it's just amazing. That piqued my interest, obviously, and I started listening to it. And turns out that this person was named William, William Henry Jackson. He was born in New York State in 1843. Um, am I getting my years right? Yeah, he lived from 1843 to 1942. And I guess maybe the interview was done in 1941, so he was 98, actually almost 99 at the time of the interview. And it was just so crazy to hear a voice from that period of time, because we've seen so many films about the American West, and basically he had been born in New York, ended up joining the Union Army in 1861 or 62, 
fought in the battle in the ba Battle of Gettysburg, ended up going as a uh, bullwhacker on the Oregon Trail to the west, went all the way to California to Los Angeles before Los Angeles was anything really. Um, I think he went to Utah and he uh, ended up in, I want to say Nebraska, where he started doing photography. He was already a painter. He had been trained as a painter. Um, so he ended up going to Yellowstone and just taking photographs of all these things that had never been photographed before, you know, um, just some of the crazy mountain ranges, the Grand Tetons, like all these things, just, just crazy life. All around the American West saw it change from some place that had had almost no settlement whatsoever. And then he talked about how, you know, seeing the, the cowboys come in and the open range days and then the settlers come in and then the range wars and just, just crazy amount of experience. And just hearing this actual voice from a human being who was born in 1843 and had experienced so much of what we in the U.S. consider one of the most seminal points of our history, the American West, the frontier, just amazing. So please watch that video. It's really cool. Um, the audio is obviously pretty old and the man who is speaking is very old. He's obviously all there, like his mind is as sharp as a tack. But, you know, his accent isn't too bad, at least I don't think so, because he actually sounds less accented than I think people from New York do now, which is kind of funny. Um, but it's just really cool. If you look him up on Wikipedia, William Henry Jackson, he had an amazing life, a very long and very full life, and you should check that out. William Henry Jackson on Wikipedia, and then the video that I watched, I will link in the description box below. It's really cool. You gonna come out? Come on out. I've gotta do a video after this. It's the trouble, working with children, animals, gerbils, they don't cooperate. So if they don't come out, if they don't wake up and allow me to film the rest of the video that I wanna post Wednesday, I don't know, we'll think of something else and you'll figure out what that is or you'll find out what that is on Wednesday. So the next segment, what the heck, Sweetwater? Many of you will probably have heard of Sweetwater. They're a very large, very, as far as I can tell, well-liked online retailer of musical equipment, instruments and effects pedals and amps and just anything to do with music that you could think of. Sweetwater probably carries it. And a lot of people really love them and I've always had fairly positive experiences with them in the past. But recently, now, it's hard to pitch this at the proper tone, I guess, because I don't want this to sound like, a major complaint or that I'm angry or something, but it's just something kind of weird. And it involves, I guess, their, their policies or their business practices. And I just thought I would mention it to you. And again, it just made me think, what the heck, Sweetwater. So I have been playing a lot of guitar recently. I'm sure you guys know that. And I thought it would be fun to start recording again, writing songs and recording songs and just kind of working on things in my spare time, which doesn't exist, but anyway in whatever time I can make. So I figured I needed a new recording interface or a new audio interface, something that I can hook up to my computer, I can plug in multiple microphones, there are um, preamps and things for those microphones, um, and then you know compression, all the stuff that you need to actually like go into a digital audio workstation and record music, do multi-track and all that stuff. And years ago, I had bought my first audio interface from Sweetwater, and that was probably in like 2012 maybe, or 13. And one thing that Sweetwater does that I think a lot of people probably like, but I'm not a huge fan of, is they ask for your phone number when you buy something from them, and then with that phone number, they will call you. Now I think of them as marketing calls, but they couch it in terms of like, oh, we're following up with you. We wanna check in and make sure that you're enjoying the thing that you purchased, ask if there's anything else you need. And for a lot of people, I'm sure this is a great thing. A lot of people really like this. I don't like that. I don't want someone contacting me, basically trying to market to me. And I understand that 
that's open to debate that some people will say, oh, they're, they're actually just doing good customer service, good follow-up. But for me, good customer service is that if I need to get in touch with someone, I can, and they will be helpful when I need them to be. I don't like to be solicited. And so after I had purchased that original audio interface, I got quite a few calls. And it got to the point where I actually blocked the Sweetwater number because I didn't want to hear from them anymore. So now, fast forward many years, it is now 2022, and I wanted to buy this audio interface. I saw it for sale on Sweetwater, and I decided to buy, the fr buy it from them. So I did. This was a week ago on a Sunday evening. I purchased it, um, put in my information, did not put in my phone number though. Whenever anyone asks for my phone number online, I put in 9999999. It's a fake number. It doesn't exist because I don't want to be solicited. I don't want marketing calls. I get enough marketing calls anyway on my cell phone. I don't know how people get my number. I don't want them to have my number. So I never give out my number. So I put in a fake phone number um, because they always want you to put in a phone number, but I don't want to put in a phone number. Anyway, the transaction goes through, everything's fine. The next day I get an email. Actually, I have this email here. This is from, I won't say the last name, but this is from Ryan, someone at Sweetwater. They say, hey Bradley, this is Ryan on behalf of your sales engineer, Cody. I wanted to let you know that we have your order here and it should be shipped to you within one to three business days. If you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to contact us. All the best, Ryan, sales engineer at Sweetwater Sound. I'm like, okay, I figured maybe it was just an automatic thing. Didn't know if there was an actual human behind the message. I'm like, okay, one to three business days. I had ordered it specifically with the shipping date in mind, thinking that I would have it by this weekend and I could use it this weekend. So fast forward again to Friday. So it had been five days since I had ordered the thing and I noticed that it still hadn't shipped. So I wrote back to Sweetwater and said, hello, I'm just wondering why my item hasn't shipped yet. I ordered it five days ago. Thanks, Bradley. I heard back from Ryan fairly quickly. Again, Ryan from Sweetwater. Hey Bradley, I'm sorry this is not shipped. I just looked into this again after following up with you on the 7th. Looks like the bank had held this one up because of the billing and phone number had not matched. Typically, I will get a notification of that right away to communicate with you, same day, and are able to verify if it by a phone call. Since that did not happen, I am able to put you on overnight for free. However, I still need to reach you on them phone before we ship this order. What's the best number to reach you at? Ryan, Sweetwater Sound. So that seemed a bit odd to me. And the reason that seemed a bit odd is because I had already checked and my card had already been charged. The bank had already okayed the purchase and I had already been charged for this item. But Ryan is saying that the bank was holding this up because the billing phone number didn't match. You don't have a billing phone number. You have your address. Your billing address matches the address on your card, the billing address that you put into the bank. So this that kind of rubbed me the wrong way right away because I thought this seems dishonest. I don't know what's going on. I know they want my phone number, but I don't, I don't believe this. So I wrote back to Ryan and said, hi, Ryan. I don't put my number online whenever I can help it to avoid marketing calls. I've never had to enter my phone number for other retailers, so I'd rather not do so now. I know that the charge went through on my card already, so I'd like the item shipped. Thank you, Bradley. Ryan responds. Hey, the bank may have to charge early for to lock you in on that financing promo. However, we still have to verify the billing number before we can ship. This was in place to protect customers from fraud. Is there any way to reach you today? Ryan, sales engineer. I know you want my number. And then I reply, I know you want my number for marketing, but I'd rather not give it to you. I prefer to communicate through email, which we're doing right now. We are communicating through email. There's no reason for them to have my phone number. Thanks, Bradley. Didn't respond to that, so I wrote one more time. Hi, Ryan. I'm still waiting for confirmation, confirmation that my item has shipped. As I mentioned, I don't give out my number to retailers, so if you have anything you need to confirm, I'd prefer to do it via email. I was charged for this item on the 7th, so I'd really like it shipped out to me as soon as possible. Have not heard a reply to that last message, and 
It has now been a week since I ordered the item. I was charged for the item the second the, or the day after I ordered it, and they still have not shipped it to me. And it seems as though Sweetwater is holding my item hostage because I won't give them my phone number. And that just seems really weird to me. And I'm to the point now where, you know, I was probably gonna spend quite a bit of money at Sweetwater in the coming years if I was really getting, getting into recording again. I hear somebody, or is that just my, my own arm? Thought I heard a gerbil. Probably microphones, all sorts of different equipment. It gets expensive when you start recording. And if this is the kind of customer service they're trying to, trying to do, it's, it seemed like coercion. It seemed like bending the truth, acting as though the bank needed my phone number. They need to check it against the bank because the bank wasn't letting the charge go through. The charge went through. I already got charged but I don't have my item. They haven't shipped it to me because I won't give them my phone number. I don't know. I'm wondering if maybe like if a manager or someone higher up than this Ryan person had seen this correspondence, they would think, okay, this has gone a little too far. I know we want to, the phone number so we can market to these people, but we don't want to piss them off. I'm to the point where I'm kind of getting pissed off and uh, I don't know. It just seems like a very strange way of doing business. Like I said, I know a lot of people like that kind of personal touch with sweet water, and I could even give them the benefit, benefit of the doubt that it is more for customer service for them than it is marketing, but I'm sure marketing is a huge bonus for them that they get to call people, they have their number, they have what they try to institute as sort of a, a personal relationship with their customers. I understand all that. I understand a lot of people actually really like that. In fact, I went on a forum um, where someone was complaining that they kept getting calls from Sweetwater and pretty much every single person on the forum was saying, hey, I love that. I really love that personal touch. So obviously it's something that's working for them. I think this goes a little bit too far though. And I would like my thing. I would like my audio interface, please. Or I guess I'm just gonna have to cancel the order and probably not buy from them again, which kind of sucks. But now, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, you can write to me by a Patreon if you are a patron there, and you can leave comments on YouTube videos with your questions on my YouTube videos, not other people's YouTube videos. So first, via YouTube, we have a question from Stratman who says, Hey, Bradley. This might be a hashtag ask stuff and things question, but seeing how you dabble in a lot of hobbies, if you start getting uninterested in a certain hobby, how do you reliant the fire? I'm assuming you mean relight the fire, or do you just let it go away? Interesting question, Stratman. I've kind of dealt with this a little bit in the past or mentioned it in passing. Yes, I get into various things. Um, I can get super into various hobbies. There are certain things that have been kind of through lines for me that I always come back to, but what typically happens is I might get super into something, do lots of research, because that's part of what I love about a hobby or just a subject, is doing a lot of research on that thing, just wringing all I can out of it. Then my enthusiasm may wane a little bit, but typically it will kind of wax and wane. Like I might get a little less into it, get more into something else, but then a couple months or a year later, get more into that again. So it kind of goes in waves where I'm really into something, really not into something. There are certain things that just don't stick at all, but I just like the idea of trying things and my interests kind of, my I follow where my interests go basically. And if I find something that is really worth it to me, then I make sure that I always hold on to that. Guitar is one of those things now. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I'm not upset if I lose interest in something, um, because there's probably a reason that I did, but yeah, I can't, I can't hold as much enthusiasm for a bunch of different things all the time. I just have to kind of pick and choose and my interests wax and wane throughout the time, throughout the years. Next from Francois Bergeron, Bradley, how many pipes do you S a day? I've gotten this question many times throughout the years, um, you know, having this channel, people obviously ask me that question. And I think a lot of people want to check with other people to see whether or not what they're doing is okay. I don't know if that's Francois's uh, situation, but 
it changes all the time. Sometimes it's one or two, sometimes it's three, maybe sometimes as many as four. Just depends on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm working, if it's a work weekday and I'm working, there's typically just like two maybe because there's one that I have that I start in the morning and then that's the same pipe or the same bowl I have pretty much all day while I'm working because I'm not I don't have my pipe in my mouth the whole time I'm working. It's just short breaks. Um, but then on the weekends, it might be more. It just depends. And it's fine. Whatever you do is fine too. Next from Kellen Ort. Are you bald or what? Sometimes you have hair and sometimes you don't. <laughs> um, that's true. Sometimes I have hair and sometimes I don't. No, I'm not, I'm not bald per se. I've got hair. It's just stupid. And I don't like it that much. Um, I woke up this morning and I had this horn on the side of my head because of the way I was sleeping. And no matter what I could do, or no matter what I tried to do, the horn would not go down. I would just flip up, flip up, tried water, tried everything. That's just where it was going to be. So I put a hat on. Um, my hair probably is not as, well, it's definitely not as thick as it used to be when I was like a teenager. And when I was maybe like 21, 22, my widow's peak went away and it kind of like receded a little bit. But I've had that pretty much that same hairline ever since my 20s. But I think on top it's getting a little thinner. So sometimes I don't want to deal with it and I shave it off or like buzz it. Sometimes I let it grow. Looks fine either way, I think. The annoying thing though is that it's kind of the same thing that people do with the beard where they go, oh, it's so much maintenance to have to shave every day. Just grow a beard. So then you have a beard and then you realize there's just as much maintenance, if not more, involved with having a beard because you have to trim it and you have to trim the edges and like it's there's always something and with the hair you think oh well I can just buzz it and it's fine I don't have to worry about it but then you have to recut it like every week so I haven't found a good balance between looking okay and not having to think about it or do too much to it so sometimes I buzz it off sometimes I let it grow and I often wear a hat because it almost always looks stupid Next, we have some feedback from Glenn Dunnington. This was from the last Sunday stuff and things. I keep thinking I'm seeing a gerbil out of the corner of my eye. Glenn says, my wife and I had a negative. Uh, they're talking about having a COVID test. So went to the testing station and were both positive. We were doing great after a few days of feeling bad. If you will notice, the tests are made in China. China says they don't have the Omicron variant in their country. Thanks for another great video. Um, yeah, I mean, I took a test and it was negative and... I, I'm very aware that there are false negatives, sometimes false positives. I, if I had kept feeling really badly in the subsequent days, I probably would have gone to get an official test. But since I started feeling fine the very next day, I thought it was fine. Uh, but thank you, Glenn. Next, from Andriana Bozovic. Uh, oh, yes. We were talking about, or I had read some feedback from someone from Serbia, I believe, and Andreana says, Ahoy, a countryman, Goran. Cool. Glad you are negative. My mom works as a domestic in a high school in Belgrade, and we were sick twice in a span of three months. Death loop is a nice game. You have to strategize a little, so it's not mindless shooting. When you announced a shooter, I thought, no, is he going to play Halo 5? My favorite. This is a good game. Thank you for the good days in a week. Say hi to Diamond. Thank you. I just like to read out stuff from people, and it's not that I don't value stuff from people in the U.S. or messages from people in the U.S. or the U.K., but it's always cool when there are people in a country like Serbia or just the far-flung reaches of the world who don't speak English as their native language watching this. It's just cool. Next, uh, feedback on the GLP's Meridian review, which posted last week. You should check it out if you haven't yet. This is from Bamig Trude. Or no, Bamig TR Dude. Thanks for the review, Bradley. Based off your first impressions video, I ordered a tin and it arrived yesterday. Sitting down to my first bowl of it now and, as always, you nailed it. Balanced. This is a very nice blend by GLPs, as most of them are, have been, so far. I agree. Glad you enjoyed it. Next, from Les Brady. Suggestion. Instead of room note, how about diamond note? As in, what does diamond think of the room note? I think that could be fun. Well, whenever she has mentioned anything, um, I have mentioned it to you. So when I was reviewing Plum Pudding Special Reserve Flake, she got a whiff of that and she hated it. <laughs> she told me her opinion of it. But typically she's not around when I'm enjoying a pipe, so she typically doesn't smell it. But when she does, she will let me know what she thinks and I will let you guys know as well. 
All right, gang, thank you for the questions. Please keep those questions coming. We need them. They help make the show better. But before we go, let me put this down. It is time for the very best part of the show. And that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. It's very, very, very amazing to me that there are people who support this channel or these channels on Patreon, and it is super helpful. Helps pay for the fancy camera that is filming this video right now. Uh, we don't have the fancy lights because this is kind of all just natural lighting in my living room, but it's much appre appreciated. We can't monetize most of the videos that have to do with the pipe hobby, so it really helps out. If you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. But every week we do a special shout out for the people who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Jason Buckner, Gloria Phillips, Ryan McFadden, Matt Marino, MD of the North, and Kyle. And of course the maniacs, the wild, crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like our good friend, award-winning author, Peter Straub, stolid, dependable Bob McGee, the amazing Mr. Luxurious David Gaudreau, and Ashes of the Phoenix rising from the ashes to carry Stuff and Things on his shoulders. Gang, thank you so much for watching this edition of Stuff and Things Plays, not Stuff and Things Plays, Sunday Stuff and Things, please, Ugh, notes everywhere. Stay tuned for whatever's gonna be on Stuff and Things on Wednesday. If these guys cooperate, there will be a gerbil video. If they don't, I'm gonna to have to think of something else. And then we also have the old fashioned video. We have something about maybe my MXR phase 90 that I just got, the hand wired script version. We wanna get into some other blends that I've got in the queue. So all of that stuff upcoming. Deathloop series, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. Maybe something about a new game. Did I even mention this? Maybe I won't mention it. I might have mentioned it at the beginning of the show, but now I won't mention it now in case I didn't mention it because I don't want you to start wondering if I'm going to actually put videos on this game on the channel. Scatterbrained. Anyway, until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Wake up. Conan, Subotai. Wake up, guys. <laughs>